Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome again to our summit, Conquering Fibromyalgia Roadmap to Energy, Strength, and Mental Clarity, where we're supporting and empowering you to conquer fibromyalgia. Today, we're joined, and by the way, I'm your host, Dr. Aviles, and uh, we're joined today by a licensed massage therapist um, who's been in the field since 2006, and it's an expert in the field of myofacial release. Um, she has actually um, mentored many, many people and even clinicians, and she has created or co-created an online self myofacial release course, which is going to empower, and it does empowers others to learn the techniques that help her um, get out of debilitating back pain. Hi, Nicole, and her name is Nicole Russo. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Dr. Avalos? Very good. Thank you for being here with us today. It's an honor, really. I'm, I'm really happy to be invited and excited to talk about myofascial release. I know you are. Tell us a little bit about your story. What made you go into this field? I think it's, this is crucial for all of us to understand, um, and it inspires us as well. Sure, absolutely. So um, I went to school for massage, and uh, I was doing that part-time for a while, and at the same time as an engineering career and decided to quit the engineering career because it was just too stressful for me and I was having a lot of essentially debilitating back pain. So I was kneeling in conference rooms and people were looking at me funny and stuff. Um, I didn't really know how to help myself. It seemed like massaging people was making myself feel even worse, not better. So um, I ended up quitting that job and just sort of, I was actually planning to go to school for physical therapy and was taking the prerequisites for it. And then in the meantime, I had met up with a friend of mine, another massage therapist, and she told me about myofascial release. And when I read about it, I was very intrigued. Um, I thought it was very interesting. So I decided to sign up and take the seminar. And it of course helped that it was in Sedona for two weeks. <laughs> so I went to Sedona for two weeks, learned myofascial work, and um, when John Barnes came up and started talking about the science of myofascial work and the different aspects involved, the piezoelectric effect, how the fascia goes from solid back to gel again, it all made sense to me because I had already studied the physics and the mechanics of things from my engineering background. So I was really excited to find um, this technique because it made sense to me, number one. Um, there was a science base to it, number two, and it helped me fix my back pain. So once I learned it, I basically wanted to uh, help others feel better. So that's, um, did you go through another therapies to get your um, treatments at that time? Um, yes. Yeah, so once I took the Barnes course, I realized the importance of getting treated regularly. And I started seeing a um, therapist who actually instructs for John now. Her name is Molly McMillan. And uh, she's up in Keene, New Hampshire. And I would go monthly. Um, it was a two hour drive for me too, because when I came back from learning myofascial release, I realized nobody in my area knew about it. Mm -hmm. There weren't many practiced um, therapist doing it. So that's why I drove the two hours up there. She's amazing. She's an amazing therapist. She still is. And um, it helped me so much. I mean, I couldn't even bend over and put my underwear on in the morning. Um, I believe you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was really bad. And now I'm able to move freely, do whatever I want to do. That back pain is no longer there. Um, and I think the more important piece of it too is that I'm able to catch now when my body is tightening. I have a better idea of how stress physically manifests in my body so that I know when to put the limits on. Like I'm doing too much, I need to take a break. Um, <clears throat> something's getting tight and I know if this continues to get tight, you know, my back will start to hurt. So I need to stop and do some self care in order to address it, whether that's stress relief, whether that's doing some of the self myofascial release in order to do that. The body is amazing. And this is one of the uh, messages that we've been trying to relate to everyone that it 
heals itself and also that has that capacity and also that it tells us when something's wrong. So I'm glad that you are bringing that up again. So what is for those out there who are new to MFR or myofascial release, what is it? What exactly is it done different from massage therapy in general? Yep. Um, when you really get down to the philosophy of myofascial release, you realize it's the complete opposite of massage therapy. Um, from a client standpoint, it's different in that you don't use any oils or lotions. Um, and the other aspect that makes it very different is it's much, much slower and much, much gentler. In fact, some people get off the table and they're like, did anything happen? <laughs> hey. But that's the importance in the educational piece of it. So myofascial release essentially works on the fascia of your body. And what is the fascia? Mm -hmm. Right. What is the fascia? Yeah, it's like this gel-like structure. Um, it goes through your entire system. And so it's like this 3D web. And it's not just on the surface. It goes all the way down to every single cell of your body. So you've got fascia surrounding your cell. Then you have fascia surrounding a muscle cell. Then you have fascia surrounding nerves and blood vessels. So literally, it's your body's structure. It's the space in between everything else. And it is gel. And so in a perfect world, you have this like nice gel and it's your shock absorber. And everything moves along. It creates this nice cushion for you. Um, but what happens is that over time, through either physical or emotional trauma um, to your body, your fascia tries to help you. So it absorbs the shock of those traumas. And in so doing, that gel now starts to harden. So now instead of this nice gel stuff, you've got this like glue in your body. Mm. Picture now, instead of gel, a nice cushion, you have glue and you've got glue over your cells, you've got glue over your muscles, over your nerves, over your blood vessels. And that pressure is what creates our pain symptoms. Mm -hmm. And there's um, been theorized or proposed that if you're having a fascia that, you know, stressed out and hardened for a long time, that can lead to the oversensitive nervous system and uh, hence a lot of pain, as in fibromyalgia. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So if you think about it, um, if you have all of these, like, uh, your nerves and your blood vessels going through like the space in between my hands. Now think of everything compressed down. So now you have all this extra pressure. Um, the pressure, uh, it can go up to 2,000 pounds per square inch of wow. spatial restriction. So picture an elephant sitting on top of your nerve. Of course, you're going to be in pain. Um, I have heard um, from different sources that myofascial release may not have actually a role in reducing the pain. And uh, there are studies out there that prove otherwise, number one. And I'm pretty sure that observational and among your patients, you've seen awesome recoveries of people with fibro who have gone through myofascial release. Can you um, tell us a little bit about that? I'm excited about hearing you yeah. talking about that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so one of the things about evidence-based practices, of course, with myofascial work, you're, it's a manual therapy, so it's kind of hard to get research on it. However, they have done many research um, studies, and they have found a significant difference with people with fibromyalgia, um, feeling better, being able to sleep more, less stress, significant reduction in pain symptoms as well. And I see that reflected in the patients that we work on in my center, not only myself, but my therapists too, that have um, clients that work with fibromyalgia, um, people who couldn't get up out of bed in the morning, or people who were on very heavy pain medications, being able to wean off of those pain medications and have a normal life again. Pain medication helps you with some pain, but the side effects of those can be really debilitating too. So having the ability to help patients like that, to get off pain, pain medication, to, you know, one of my patients not being able to ride her bike anymore, and now she can, you know, ride, ride her bike wherever she wants to go, 
um, other patients who have had debilitating migraines and other fibromyalgia symptoms like that, going from a, you know, a migraine every few days down to maybe once a month or once every several months. This is so exciting and I want people to hear it out there that there is hope in pain control through this type of um, therapy. Now, how long would a session um, take, for example, a patient who's very in a lot of pain and you take that patient for the first time or client? Take me through that. Okay. Um, so the first time I see somebody, um, we talk about you know how long it's going to take. Everybody wants the magic number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if you're in pain, it's like, please. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember going through my own journey and thinking to myself, when is this going to stop? I just need for always looking for like the magic button in my body that when we press that magic button, my pain will be gone. And sadly, I don't mean to break people's hearts about this, but we don't have that magic button. However, um, it is a process and it really depends upon the person. It depends upon your willingness to be open, your willingness to do the self-care at home, um, your willingness to feel into your own body, not only the, the physical piece of it, but also the, the stress piece of it, the emotional aspect of it as well. Um, so I really work with the patient and educate them in terms of myofascial release, first of all, and understanding what it is. And second of all, that it will be a journey. It's not going to be one session. Um, when you think about how long it took you to sort of develop these fibromyalgia symptoms over years, spanning years sometimes, um, you start to understand how long it might take to start to see some relief. That being said, not to deter people, I've worked with people and after one session, 50% of their pain is gone. Wow, that is fantastic. I mean, it won't be the same for everyone, but that's great. Yeah, news. exactly. So I hate to limit people's um, beliefs that, you know, oh, I'll have to do this for a very long time. You might not have to. So I think it's always good to stay positive and, and open to whatever therapies that you do decide to try. And usually is this done every week, every month? I mean, it's individualized, but in general. Yeah, um, when I start to see somebody, I will usually, by the time they're coming to see me, they're desperate. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it like that, but we try to go through the traditional routes first. We're scared. We don't know what's wrong with our body. We go to the doctor. We try physical therapy. We try surgery. We try everything, and we're still kind of feeling the same symptoms. I was there. I'm a physician, allopathic, and all of a sudden I'm saying, oh my God, this is not working for me. This is the medicine that I know, but it wasn't. So I, I had to start doing something different. So exactly my, my story. Yeah. Um, and so once you're at that point, you're also at a pretty high pain level. Um, and so usually what I'll recommend is that people try to come to see me at least once a week for like five to six sessions. Um, and then we evaluate from there. I tell people that once a month is really not going to work if you want to see some progress uh, mm -hmm. fast. And, you know, depending on people's schedules, maybe they can't come in once a week. Maybe they can only do every other week. Um, there's intensive programs at the John Barnes Centers where they do two to three weeks of uh, three 60-minute sessions a day. So there really is no limit on how much you can do. When I was getting treated by um, Molly, um, and still am, I go up to see her and I do four hours in the day. So um, there's no limit. You, re you really can't go, go wrong. Awesome. And for those who do not know who John Barnes, he's the daddy of the myofascial release technique, correct? When did it start, by the way? Um, oh boy, now you're going to quiz me. <laughs> No, I am not. I am I just curious. teaching it in the, the 70s. Okay, I'll um, take it. He's teaching he's <laughs> in the 70s, and he's just a wonderful, wonderful individual. I, I feel so grateful to him that he has given this gift to us to teach us how to do this work so that we can help so many people. Awesome. The engineer in you just came out. <laughs> 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 right now, yeah. I, I heard you mentioning something so important, 
self care. And uh, we had Tammy Stacklehouse, and she's a certified health coach. And she, her topic um, was actually self-compassion. And one of the things that she was talking about is my commitment to myself to be compassionate is to have that self care. Be, and, and I heard you saying that you can go maybe to do myofascial or go to the Cairo or acupuncture, but if you don't follow through at home, it's going to limit your healing, correct? Correct. I think that for my own journey, and I know for many, many other myofascial therapist journeys, patients' journeys, a huge piece of this is about taking care of yourself, loving yourself, creating the right boundaries for yourself, honoring yourself. Once you can start learning how to do that, that's the true root cause of some of these physical manifestations, some of these stress responses. You believe something, but you're doing what the other person tells you to do because of whatever, and it creates a stress response in your body. It sounds so simplistic, but that's really where, where it really boils down to. So your ability to start setting those boundaries for yourself and saying, I need to take care of me because nobody else is going to take care of me. We have parents all our lives and we grow up assuming they'll take care of us. But at some point, we kind of have to be our own parents now. Awesome. And, and your um, clinic called Skin to Soul, I love that name because it reflects so much. And I know, I mean, I was looking at your website and how giving and how actually that skin to soul um, clinic name permeates the whole website. Oh, thank um, and, you. Yes, and I do appreciate that when we have fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic fatigue syndrome, we must look for that type of person, clinician, therapist, advocate to yep. go through the whole thing with you, right? Yep. Absolutely. And I, I, I do understand you have three satellite clinics, is that correct? In yeah, Boston? I do. We have three locations in Boston. Um, <laughs> I, when I first took John's first seminars, uh, I came back and I was so pumped about this work and I came back and nobody knew about it. So not only did I have to educate clientele to come to these centers that I kept waking up in the middle of the night with visions of all of these centers. And I'm like, wow, that is lovely. <laughs> Like, how's this going to happen? Um, I had to educate clientele, but also educate uh, massage therapists about it to go to learn it so that once we had the clientele, we had therapists to work with them. So it's been a really cool journey. I feel so blessed to be able to do this work, to have these centers, to help so many people um, in our area with myofascial release. Um, now, at home. Can you go over the self myofascial release so we know exactly or have an idea on what to do and not to do for fibro um, when we're doing that self-care? Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the main, so with self myofascial release, um, it is a lot, it's like stretching. I don't know how many of you know yin yoga, um, but instead of going to like your max point of stretching where it hurts, you kind of back off a little. So you get to this sort of point where like, all right, say we're gonna like just stretch our arms out. We go to this nice stretched out area where we're not going this far. So we're going with you. Yeah. Um, but we're sort of coming back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, going all the way. Yeah, telescoping okay. our arm. So sort of that means like stretching it out that way. Um, and you just hold it. And you use the least amount of your muscles possible to sort of hold yeah. it. And when you're doing some of these stretches, the trick is the time limit. And that's one of the huge differences between John Barnes' myofascial release and other types of myofascial release is that John understands it takes at least three to five minutes for the fascia to start to melt. How, how long did you say? Three to five minutes. Gotcha. So it's really good if you're doing a stretch at home, like set a timer, etc. Um, I have a 
one of my free gift um, is a self myofascial course. It's uh, five days of the most effective techniques for self myofascial release. Um, uh, on lookinsidelovyourlife.com. And I think you're going to give us a link, right? Give them a link to it or something. Absolutely. That link okay. is going to be for everyone to, you know, click on that button and get that. Mm -hmm. Right. So that those will go into exactly the stretches you need to do exactly how you need to do them. There is also a meditation in there too. Because oh, nice. the other part with myofascial release is sort of this, um, awareness of your body, getting awareness of your body. So we're not just holding our arm out here and waiting for something to happen. We're calming down, we're grounding into our body, we're feeling into the stretch. What does this feel like to us? Does it feel like it's really hard? Um, is it stressing us out? Does it remind us of something? Um, so really gaining awareness of your body parts again, taking control back of your body. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, it takes the time and the energy to do these self-myofascial techniques. Do you run any groups by any chance, Facebook groups or any other groups? Um, yeah. Um, so I do have a Facebook group for, the, for some of my myofascial self-care video courses online. Um, and then I have a Facebook group that I will do. I'll go live on. I just did a live video the other day on um, techniques for releasing TMJ on oh, your wow. cell. So that one's pretty cool too and, and really helpful. Um, that, that is extremely helpful. And yeah. so we, where do we go for your Facebook group and then get the notifications when those live happen? Yeah. So the Facebook group is just skin to soul. Um, and then you, you just like it. And I have most of my live videos on there. Um, and then the look inside love your life, uh, dot com that has a bunch of video blogs on there. We go into, um, all kinds of different stretches, all kinds of different philosophies and techniques on there. So, okay. And then how often do you run those lives? If you do it in a structured manner, or is it just when you, I mean, every three months, every month? No, we're doing at least a few every month. So good. Because I know that. Um, we have people from, and I've said this, from South America that may want to get in your groups and start doing and liking your page because this is extremely necessary. Sometimes we just don't even where to start and, or we don't have the money and then boom, you get a group and you can start doing and you get encouraged, empowered, and you move forward. Yeah, absolutely. So I do appreciate that. So um, in terms of your what not to do for fibro at home. Yep. What would you recommend? Okay. What not to do is freak out. <laughs> because again, I said what not to do is not freak out. <laughs> so I think once you're in this pain cycle, it's easy to kind of freak out and get stressed out. So um, that's the first thing. And then I would say just uh, try to be patient with yourself. I know we're on what not to do, but being patient with yourself. Uh, this is totally a new way to do things. It's gonna take time to learn it. Um, so definitely don't go too fast. Take your time, slow down. It's better to go too slow than too fast, particularly with fibro, because you don't wanna go past that sort of pain threshold. And that's actually one of the reasons fibro patients really like myofascial release is because it's slow. It's gentle. It's not going to jostle your body. Um, I know one patient of mine, every time she got a massage, she had a huge flare up, but when she did myofascial release, she felt better. Um, so that would be my number one takeaway is, is slow down, be patient, take your time and do not push yourself in any way. Excellent. Any, um, I know it's more myofascial, but because you have the background on um, massage therapies, any postures that you should not assume at home or try to avoid? That's, um, you know, in a dream world, we're not all sitting at a computer all day. Um, I think it's helpful to get up, move around, do some gentle walking, things like that. Um, again, yeah. it really goes back to just being gentle with yourself and everything in moderation. And 
it sounds so cliche, but once you're at this sort of fibromyalgia state where everything is like this heightened sensitivity, mm -hmm. no other option at that point. You have to do it for your own health. Yeah. Um, one of the things that helps me is, like we talked, it's listening to my body. And if I am sitting too long, I need to stand, I need to breathe, and I need to leave what I'm doing um, and then come back when I'm ready. I mean, I'm, I'm giving my body that release and that, you know, mm -hmm. breathing in that is so important. Um, so Nicole, anything else you'd like to add today for all the people who are watching you? Um, just give yourself that chance. Don't just watch this summit and then, you know, well, hopefully you actually watch. So that's the first step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the second part is just actually try something. Try one thing. Even if, you know, it could be overwhelming. You're seeing all these different opinions, all these different people. Look at the one that like draws you in and you're interested in. You don't have to do all 20. Just pick one and then listen to them and do whatever they suggest and see how it works for you. But at least just do one thing. Commit to yourself that you're gonna take one tiny action towards helping yourself conquer fibromyalgia. Excellent, and you know, I almost forgot to ask you, how do you know um, how to choose the right um, myofascial release person? A lot of people out there might say they are doing MFR, but I am not sure personally and sometimes um, how to differentiate. Sure, you're correct. It is confusing. Um, I would call up the office and ask them, you know, who did they study from? John Barnes myofascial release is pretty much the best. Um, there's also um, a website, it's mfrtherapists.com. Thank you. Can you repeat that please? mfrtherapists.com. Okay. That is John's son's website, Mark Barnes. He created it um, so that you can find any MFR therapist hmm. in the country. And that would be, um, I hope, categorized. I'll take a look at it. And certainly I would like to post that in the email as well. Um, it's going to help me to help my patients and, of course, people out there also can go in and check it out. So I think that this has been very, very, um, um, it's an eye opener to know that there's a way that you can relieve your pain. And I thank you, Nicole, for that, for this um, information today. And certainly you may see quite a few new faces in your um, Facebook group and uh, learning from you. Absolutely. That'd be great. Thank so, you very much. I really appreciate this time to do this. I, I do appreciate you coming and spending your time with us. So I just want to say thank you to all. Thank you, Nicole. And um, we hope to see you again tomorrow in um, Conquering Fibromyalgia Summit. Bye-bye.